Do you guys want a very attack and tactic that scores over three goals a game and won five trophies in one season? If you do, then do stick around. Guys, it is Josh from FM Scout, and today I'm going to bring you a brand new tactics video made by me. It's going to be a very attack and tactic, as I did point out, and this one is all about goals, goals, and you guessed it, more goals. It's not only just about that, though. It does win a lot of trophies, it performs at any level, and trust me, it's definitely worth a shot. If you like these tactic videos, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, and also check out the other content on the channel. There's tons of good stuff. So, we're going to kick things off then with Manchester City. Obviously, we like to get the powerhouse out the way first and then move on to the underdog teams, the less known teams. But this is the main save. Obviously, we won five trophies in one season. The Champions League, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup and the FA Community Shield. We scored, 80, scored 89 goals. We gained 89 points in the Premier League. We scored 129 across the season and only conceded 37. A real, real good display there. In terms of the data hub, we are going to have a little look. As you can see, three points. 0.39 goals per game can see this in at only 0.97 and quite a decent pass completion now the pass completion isn't the main focus we're all about with this one as this tactic as you're going to see later is a very unique sort of shape it's all about going forward getting goals and really pushing your attack and limits to the max and that's exactly what we've done with this man city team some of the league stats that do go into our favour are going to be the most points, most goals, obviously. Most shots for actually over 800 shots this season. Most possession. And obviously, this is a bit of a shock one because although we're Man City, this is by no means a possession-based tactic. So it's quite cool we'll rank that high. We then go and test with Watford. Now, I've seen this been suggested a couple of times. And I thought, do you know what? Let's try and make some of you happy. So do you know what? Today, we are going to be using Watford in the championship. And do you know what? It's not just the championship we dominated. We also had a very good season in the FA Cup. And all the way to the semi-finals, where unfortunately we did lose to Chelsea. We scored 134 goals in the league, conceded 47, and also the league was actually quite an entertaining one. Norwich also got over 100 points, but we come out with 114 and put on a real, real good display. In terms of the data hub, we are going to have a quick look. You're looking at 2.91 goals per game, conceded just to over one goal a game, but that's not too bad considering we are scoring, nearly getting on for triple to what we're conceding, and the pass completion is going to be higher than what actually Man City's was, I believe, as this one ranks at 85.79%. In terms of the league stats, we love looking at these on this channel now. Most points per game, most goals, most possession. Actually, 64% to be exact. A very impressive stat line. And also, what is the pass What is the pass completion? Again, 85%. So overall, a very, very good season. The, the stats which mean the most to us in terms of making an attack and tactic are the ones that we're going to be gaining. That's exactly the main focus. But to double check it again, an incredible season. Then go and test with Hamabi. Obviously, a very different team. One that I picked at random, to be honest. Just wanted to get in, get in as many leagues as possible, see what they were about. And we absolutely dominated. Not only winning the division, we also won the cup here, scoring 85 goals and only conceding 27. It was not even close to the division, as we actually had a 15-point advantage over second place Malmo, who I believe are actually favourites, favourites to win the league. We were. Fourth place predicted. So a little bit of an overachievement coming in there as well. And in terms of the data hub, we are going to have a quick look. As you can see, 2.83 goals per game. Can see this in a 0 0.90. So a very good sort of difference there. Over two and a half goals easily and way under a goal per game as well. And the pass completion again, sitting at roughly around 85%. In terms of the league stats, again, you're going to be seeing most points per game, most goals, most shots for. Also, the most possession does go to Malmo, but we were 1% behind him coming in at 64, showing that this tactic, although it's not based around it, is actually really good at holding the ball and keeping possession. And do you know what? That's something which we're going to take and walk with because it's quite a big part of the game. And finally, we test with Zelina, again, a team I've never used and was very intrigued to see exactly how this league operates. And do you know what? We took it by storm. We won, obviously, the league and also the cup, scoring 117 goals and only conceding 38. A few red cards, so we are going to talk about how you can get rid of some of those when we obviously break down the tactic. We scored 80 points in a division compared to second place of 69. So again, a nice 11-point advantage. You can't really complain there. And in terms of the data hub, we are going to have a quick look. 3.66 goals per game conceded just at 1.19 so a little bit more conceded with this team but i do believe we weren't favorites again we are going to have a little look um not on the club info again fourth prediction so definitely not the favorites to win the division but we have come out and done that anyway going back onto the data hub 
because I did forget. 3.66, obviously, over the goal of the game we just talked about, and the pass completion sitting at roughly around 85%. So I'd say this number especially is quite consistent. It's always going to be around 85%. And the goals per game, I'd say more is around about three. Obviously, with Man City, it was quite high. But as, as a sort of average, around three goals a game, and probably around about just under 0.9 conceded per game. So overall, a very, very, very solid tactic. So we're going to watch some goals now. An 8-0 win over Bournemouth. I just wanted a game of a ton of goals. And this is definitely going to deliver. So Gomez down the left-hand side here. Absolutely acres of space. Pause here and look. We've got one, two, three, four. Is that five players in the box? Tons of players to go to as Jack Grealish is the man that does stand out and get the goal. A fantastic ball in and a fantastic finish. And that's going to be Erling Haaland stepping up with a penalty. The Bournemouth keeper absolutely shaken seeing Haaland on the penalty spot, as you would do. Haaland wins it back again here into Calvin Phillips, into Diaz. Pushed quite high up the field, into Phillips again. A ball into the box. Sensei misses it. And Greenish goes with his head to tuck it away to make it 3-0. We go again again when it actually gets to it there we go inside of the 65th minute as Kyle Walker drives up the field all over the top nice and simple into De Bruyne passes it into Haaland very unselfish of him that is typical Kevin De Bruyne we love to see and a great goal from Erling Haaland we go again now with Riyad Mahrez down the left hand side taking his time with it no defenders putting any pressure on him back into Gomez a ball into the box, into Julian Alvarez. A little bit of luck, but you've got to be in the right areas. And one thing you've got to notice in this sort of tactic is how many people you're going to have in the box. It's really, really impressive. You've got to score a lot of goals, trust me. Trust me on that one. Cole Palmer, again, goes down the right-hand side. Always options in the box. You can see for the cutback here, he could go here near post. He could also probably drag it across here, and there's going to be an easy tap-in for Mares. You're going to have Rodrigo possibly running into the box here. He goes to Alvarez who goes into Grealish, the player lurking on the edge, and actually gets another goal. Jack Grealish having a really, really good season, by the way, under this tactic, which we love to see. Kyle Walker again, sort of centralised a little bit here, but he's just going to play a direct ball over the top into Alvarez, who flicks it on into Erlen Haaland. Neto should be saving that, in my opinion, but overall still a very, very good goal. A lovely bit of play. You notice how easy it is to obviously get goals in this system with the sheer amount of options you have going forward. Erlen Haaland in behind here. Neto, a little trying to be heroic, is still down, and that's a good first time, a good first time finish from Mares, to be fair. It might look easy, but trust me, that's not an easy finish. So, Dominant game, obviously Bournemouth literally offered nothing, so an absolute thumping, and we're now going to go ahead and break down the tactic. So this is the all-out attack created by me. I want to say quickly, if you are enjoying the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, and do check out my content in the description. If you want a, if you want a good Twitch stream to watch, you can also see me. The link is on the screen right now. We're live basically every single day, producing some top quality content. The vibes are absolutely immaculate. But let's go ahead now and break down this tactic. So we're going to start off then. It is based around a Tiki Taka style. Now, I know I said it's not all about Tiki Taka. It's not meant to be. As you can see, there's a lot of players going forward. It's, the midfield's not stacked by any means. So the fact to actually maintain that amount of possession is really, really impressive. But attacking mentality in possession, you want fairly narrow pass into space, play out of defense, a shorter passing directness, a higher tempo, work ball into the box, and also low crosses in transition. You want counter press, counter, distribute quickly, distribute to the full backs and the center backs, and also take short goal kicks. And out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, preferential goalkeeper distribution, and also much more often. Now, you can play with a higher line if you want to try and chase more goals. If you're after a, if you're after a goal desperately, I would recommend that. But don't go with it all the time because you will be very vulnerable at the back. Trust me. And we then go over to the various player roles. Now, a lot of people have pointed out I only need to read out the ones that are highlighted green, not all of them. So I do apologize about that. We're going to tweak that for you right now. So we're going to start off with the goalkeeper on defend. Nice and simple. No instructions. Literally as basic as it gets. We then have a fullback on the right hand side on support. On cross from deep, cross aim center, shoot less often and sit narrower. Two central defenders, default instructions default instructions. Nice and basic, nothing special, just nice and simple. We then have a fullback on the left-hand side on automatic, on cross from deep, cross aim at the centre, get the ball at the centre basically, shoot less often and sit narrower. We then have a deep line playmaker on defend. The best role I've actually found to sort of hold this midfield. I felt like a ball in the midfielder wasn't really doing enough and a deep line playmaker does the defending side of the game but also can find some absolutely lethal passes. Then on the left-hand side we've got a winger on attack, 
default instructions, nothing special, so I'm not going to bother reading it out. And on the right-hand side, it is literally exactly the same. So keep it as it is, because trust me, you don't need to do anything special. This will get goals as it is. You don't really want anyone cutting inside anyway, because you've got two strikers there. It will just be an absolute cluster. And then the one here, the Shadow Striker on attack. Yes, you can use an Advanced Playmaker. You can use an AM. But in my opinion, a Shadow Striker, default instructions, does more than enough. Then two advanced forwards. We're going to have the one on the left on move into channels, and the one on the right is also on move into channels as well. Nice and basic. Now, if you're wondering why, why are all these so basic, it's because because there's so many players forward, I don't really want to have like all of them on shoot more often, for example. I don't really want them on shoot less often either. So for me, I sort of just let them do what they wanted to do, and it worked really, really well. Hence why we don't have an inverted forward or an inside forward, because we've got so many players in the box anyway, we don't really want any more. And we don't really want the striker shooting more often as well, because then we're going to waste a lot of chances. And I genuinely believe this tactic works really well the way it is. But let me know in the comments how you get on. As always, you can download this from download it from the FM Scout website to save you a lot of time. If you guys have enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the FM Scout channel, and I will see you for the next tactic, which will be on Sunday.